we wanted uh, the TAs to be familiar with it because I think as far as we have seen once the videos are done with the props, most of the work is going to be handled by the TAs of, you know, hosting the thing. There's a lot of interaction with the students, which again probably the TAs will be handling and stuff. And we will also require some kind of interaction with you on some points which we will be bringing out later on. So, uh, yeah, so the workshop we expect it to be like uh, max of two hours. So we have two parts to the workshop. So the first part is going to be the Google Course Builder platform. So that is a platform on which the MOOC courses are being hosted. So it's an online portal on which all the courses, the videos, the assignments, everything gets hosted. Uh, Andrew, would you like to take over? Okay. So uh, the first part of it will be that we have Ms. Chitra here who has been uh, Professor Nagendra's uh, TA. Uh, Professor Nagendra had a basic electrical circuits course which ran from August to December. We are having the exams for that course now. So she will be explaining what are the processes involved in that. And we have uh, the next part of the uh, workshop today will be handled by the people from TCS. TCS is an exam partner with whom we actually coordinate opening up the registration forms for the exams and the final conduct of the uh, certification exam. So they will tell you in what ways they will have to interact with the faculty, what is the data required from the faculty and so on. So essentially the workshop is uh, of two parts today. So we've had uh, three courses so far. One, we completed the whole process, which was programming data structures and algorithms. That was a course run by our computer science department faculty, Professor Hema Murthy, Professor Narayan Swami, and uh, Professor Shankar Balachandran. That ran from March to July. And uh, currently we have two courses, which is one is uh, Basic Electrical Circuits by Professor Nagendra of IIT Madras and uh, Professor Satyadev of IIT Kanpur has been offering an introduction to programming in C. So this, the coming Sunday we are having the certification exam for the two courses, which is one date and the other uh, exam is going to run on December 14th. So by end of December we hope to close these two processes. So the next run of courses we are having starts from January 5th and it goes on up to February 28th. That is a course run date, wherein the students will actually have the lessons coming out to them as assignments and so on. We'll share all the dates with you, I'm just telling you. And we have uh, 10 confirmed courses lined up for the January, February term. So amongst that, we have like, uh, I think uh, six courses from IIT Madras, three are from IIT Kanpur, and we have one from uh, Chennai Mathematical Institute, Madras. So, total of 10 courses, maybe one or two may get added, we are not sure. So, 10 are confirmed as of now. And uh, the exam dates for that will be on March 22nd and 29th. So, that is what we are looking at as exam dates and the course starts from this. So, we have some pre-processes wherein December 1st, okay, the major thing that we will start off even before I give it off to Ms. Chitra is, uh, December 1st, we plan to start the enrollment for the courses. There are two parts to a course, okay, the course is entirely free. Anybody can enroll, there is no criteria or whatever for anybody to enroll to a course. Anybody can enroll, they can view the videos, they can uh, submit the assignments and everything, okay. So, uh, that happens. There is only a fee collected for if somebody wants to write the uh, certificate exam. So at that point of time we tell them that there is a fee you have to pay to register for that. So the enrollment we are starting on December 1st. So we are opening up the 10 courses. We will have to have a one page ready for them. We will show you a sample of that wherein we will require a two minute video from uh, we will uh, require a two minute video from each of the faculty introducing the course and then we will require uh, some details about the course, about the course instructor, about anything else you think, you know, who, it, uh, who the intended audience might be, any basic requirements you have for somebody who would want to, you know, follow the course or something like that. That page we would want it to be ready by November 28th, this Friday. We would require a sign off from you all or the faculty, I mean, which we would like you all to follow up with the faculty saying that, yes, that page is ready and we are opening it up for enrollment on December 1st. So December 1st, we will show it live and it goes that day. So, yeah, this is the page that I think Ms. Chitra will handle. So uh, this is one immediate requirement that we will have from you by the end of this week that we will require. So firstly, the page will be created for them uh, by you or the admin, yeah, right? The login ID, password and we share it with the faculty. Okay. Okay, uh, so one part is, I mean, uh, for me, the course, uh, the first page was already set up, that is, the in the Google Course Builder, okay, so that part, uh, I can, I mean, once you, if you're able to log into Google Course Builder, I can show what to do, how to create that login, I'm not sure, maybe creating this login, okay. So, once you log in, uh, this is the, and if you go to your course, you will see a page like this. And to edit it, 
I mean, all of the editing is done from what is known as this course dashboard. Okay, I think it's already here. I don't need to go there. Yeah. So this is where you edit all of the settings. Okay. So the there is a tab called settings, which is where. which is where the front page of the course is controlled, okay? So for instance, I mean, you can't read this very well here. Let's see, I go to edit. Okay, so uh, this is the, uh, this is the front page that anyone will see uh, before uh, logging in, okay? So this is sort of just an introductory uh, portion for this one, for the course. And you can have the course abstract here and so on. And all kinds of information about the course, okay? This is the biography of the teacher. This is the list of uh, topics and so on. And there will also be an introductory video whose YouTube ID has to be entered here so that so first let me show you the view of somebody who is not logged in. Let me log out of here. Uh, yeah, first let me, uh, okay. So this is the preview page. I think it is showing first. I think this has changed now, right? The way the things look has changed a little bit, but uh, so you can see uh, the course and so on, all of this information is basically what was in here, okay? And the bio, the list of topics I showed you earlier. For instance, the list of topics is here and that's what appears here, okay? And also, if you click on this, they'll see a two minute or okay, in my case, seven minute introductory video <laughs> on uh, uh, what the course is all about, okay? So I mentioned the course video, the ID of uh, this YouTube video, the introductory portion will be in here, okay? So that's how you set it up. But uh, once the login is set up, it's automatically, they have a course builder account here, is it? Ah, okay. So. Maybe I will log into one of those. Uh, yeah, what is that? It's just. Can you, can you? So this, uh, I think my course data has been copied to this. No, no, no. You have to no. Oh, yeah, 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 okay, okay. I think this is not yeah, in the, I think no, let me. Just change it. Yeah. My courses. Oh, even my courses won't show it. Okay, I have to do a HS. Uh, Oh, this is underscore. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this information, the URL information will be given to you. So then, uh, okay. So right now there is nothing here other than the title. So if I go to the... Oh, okay. So instructor is here. That's good. Okay. So then, I mean, uh, whatever goes on the front page, you can uh, include in this, okay, by going to settings. So that's about uh, what you see on the front page. I mean, by clicking edit here, you can edit everything in this one. So right now you see that only the course name is entered. Everything else is blank, okay? Uh, welcome email. Yeah, so that, uh, what happens is whatever uh, email you enter here, so anytime a student registers for the course, this email will go to them. 
So, in my, I mean, it usually has some the same preliminary information as uh, you have in the rest of the, uh, I mean, on the web page itself. Uh, it says, yeah, welcome to this course, and uh, this course will have this many weeks of content. The usual stuff, some preliminary information about the course. Maybe so that's what it's going to be. Uh, maybe they should just click on the text and always enter. In yeah, the yeah text. that's right. That's the other thing. So. It's uh, otherwise you have to uh, do the HTML formatting by adding those tags. So if you click on rich text, you can enter it and use these things for your format formatting and so on. Okay. Just like Word. Yeah. I would suggest going to rich text. Yeah. So all of this has to be entered by. A couple of buttons on top, making course available, etc. That's important. Yeah, so I think this is already there. It's already done for this and enable registrations. This yeah. will, I think, they will do it on December yeah, 1st, you said, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I guess obviously by the time we enable registrations, all of this has to be filled so that uh, people who uh, want to come in and look at and find the details of the course, they have to be, I mean, they have to be able to see them, okay? So this is, I mean, the fields are self-explanatory and you can always go back to one of the existing courses to see what uh, what goes where, okay? So now this uh, outline is where you will have all the uh, content that is lessons and units and so on. This, so the, by the way, the settings is something that you do once and then leave it there. This outline is what you will be playing, outside and assets are what you will be playing with uh, constantly because every week you will have to update the lessons and units and uh, assignments and so on, okay? So now I will go back to my course and uh, she will show how to, uh, um, how to handle, uh, how to add content into this outline page and how it appears in your, uh, in the course view, okay? So now I will go to the outline of this course. You can see a number of things listed here, units and lessons under them. So uh, in this, uh, in the Google course builders terminology, so each hour or hour and a half lecture, that is what is called a unit and that will be split up into small segments and each segment is called a lesson. So where that appears, I mean where that is relevant is if you want to add one of these things, it says unit 1, preliminaries, current and voltage and so on. This I created by adding a unit and these by adding lessons within that unit. She will show the details. Now uh, of these things, basically we have used the first four up to analytics is something where you see the data of who has, uh, how many people have solved the assignments and so on. This uh, mentors and peer review, we have not used for our courses. Peer review is kind of straightforward. You can have some assignments which will be peer graded, but uh, we have not used them. I do not know if it is. Uh, a relevant thing and an important thing for your course, you can use that. This mentors, I think that facility was there, but I guess we, I mean, nobody uh, was. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. So this is, uh, this is actually not for uh, us, right? It's more for we have to set who the mentors are, and the mentors can track the progress of the students. So, for instance, if your course is being uh, seen by, let's say, a group of students in a college, there could be a mentor in that college who could also be tracking their progress and so on. Okay. So she'll show these things, uh, adding the units and lessons and assignments and all of that stuff. And so one thing is, I mean, you can go on editing this and uh, during editing, of course, uh, you can keep things private. For instance, some of these things it shows it as being private, which means that it will not be visible to others, but in your own course view, it will be visible. So you can go on editing until the look and feel is satisfactory and then make it public, okay? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Chitra, an MS student working under Professor Nagendra Krishnabura, and I was an on TA for this online course. So we'll begin with the first page. As you can see, on the left side, we have the course outline. 
the lessons and units have been listed out. The lessons and units have been listed out there. And towards the top right, you can see the options announcements, forum, and progress. The announcements will take you to the announcement page. Forum is a discussion forum. And progress will show you the number of the progress of a student. In the sense, it will show you uh, how many quizzes a particular student have attempted. Similarly, and how, how the average score for each quiz. And all this has been set up from what is known as a course dashboard. This is the course dashboard page. In outline, we can see all the lessons and units listed out. The assets page consists of all the supporting materials, like the images required for questions, some questions, etc. Settings, this has been covered already. Analytics will show the number of students who have enrolled for this course and the performance of uh, number of students who have attempted a particular quiz and the average scores of all the students in the quiz. I'll skip the other three topics and help. It has an array of materials that you can use whenever you run into trouble with Google Course Builder. Coming to outline, I've created a small demo unit. I'll first show you the demo unit and then we can recreate it once again here. This is the less unit name, demo one. It's followed by the lesson name. A video has been embedded in it. And then this is followed by some text related to the video. Now to create this, we go to the course dashboard in the outline page and we click on add unit. We give a title. We'll retain it as private for the time being, then click on save. Once the unit is created, we have to start adding lessons to it. Therefore, we click on add lesson. Give a lesson name. Select the parent unit. So in our case, it is demo2. Now for video ID, we have to give the URL of the YouTube video. So suppose we want this particular video. Whatever you see here, after the V equal to sign. Let's say you set this. So I'll show this separately. Yeah. So if this is a YouTube video URL, whatever you see after the question mark V equal to, this is a YouTube ID. So you select this. To add some material to the lesson body, we go to the rich text mode and enter the text. It's easier to edit in rich text mode and it's easier to enter stuff also. In the sense, it's easier to uh, insert images and other components. But suppose you want uh, superscripts or subscripts, then it's easier to use it as an HTML tag. You can use the SUP or SUB tag. OK, so this is done. The lessons, individual lessons can either be made private or public. It will not make much of a difference as long as the unit is made private. So if the unit is private, you can create lessons as public. And at the end, once all the lessons are finalized, you can make the unit private. So for the time being, I'll create this as a public lesson. Okay, let's see how this looks like. We have created the unit demo to the lesson is here. So this is what we have created now. Moving on to the next lesson to be created. This consists of a video followed by some question. 
Now this question has three parts, the text related to the question, an image and finally an interface. So the student can enter an answer and check if the answer is right or wrong. So there is a box to enter the answer and a box to give you the feedback. Now in case the student is not able to find the answer by himself, he can click on skip and show answer and the final answer will be shown. Now let's see how this can be created. So we again go back to the outline page. The first step in creating an activity question like this is to upload the image related to it. So for this we go to the assets page. Scroll down till you reach the images section. Click on this. And you can browse the image from your system and upload it. So for the time being, I'll use the images that has been uploaded already. Let's create one more lesson for this. I'll put the same video ID as before. Now to create the activity question, it has to be given in a particular format inside this box. I'll show you the format first. So where activity equal to question type, it can either be free text or uh, multiple choice. So in this case it is free text, then question HTML, we give the question in HTML format. So if you want to enter something in the next line, you have to use the HTML tag BR or P. And image has to be included in the following format. The correct answer rich X, this shows the answer, the correct answer rich X, it shows the answer to which the student's answer will be matched. Now suppose you give just minus 160 within two forward slashes, the system will search for minus 160 in the string that has been entered by the student. So even if the student enters minus 1600, it will show a correct match. Now, if you want an exact match, please add a hat at the beginning and a dollar symbol at the end. Hat will make check for uh, string matching from the beginning and dollar will check for the string matching from the end. Therefore, this gives a complete string match. Then correct answer output gives you the feedback if the answer is correct. Incorrect answer output gives you a feedback when the answer entered by the student is wrong. And show answer output is what you get when the student clicks on skip and show answer. Is this the only way to do this or is there any other way? Uh, we found that this was the best way in the sense this could give a feedback to the student. Okay. Well, entering the question and getting out the answer. Do you have to technically know those details or is there anything? You just have to know the script once, meaning once you have the format, you can reuse it again and again. So. But yes, that's the only way to do yeah, that it. That's the only way to do it. No, for a person say, who is not familiar with those tags and those... Uh, you don't have to touch anything else like she pointed out. Just you that only have to use the... the within, code, what is, within course, what is there, you replace. So we'll copy that and paste it in the activity section. Samples. Uh, you need those. Keep them there. Other people may be able to quickly use them. Okay. Now, activity title can be given, but in case you are not giving a title, it will get saved with the lesson ID and lesson title. So, we will leave that for the time being. Activity is listed when you want this activity to appear as a separate lesson. But currently we want it under the video, so we uncheck that box. So once this is done, we save it. And now we have to include this activity in the lesson body. So we go to the rich text format, click on this red toolkit. The component to be inserted is an activity and the activity ID is this. That's the same as a lesson ID and lesson title. So we save this. 
let us make the lesson public and say. Below the lesson, that is an important part of the MOOC, meaning uh, the whole idea is to have short segments and make the students work something out immediately after work doing that. Okay? So, it is good to organize the lessons in a way, I mean it is up to the instructor I know, but uh, uh, it is good to organize it in a way that the segments are short and after every segment there is some activity related to the segment. Okay. So, this is what we have done right now. Let us check the next lesson. So, again this has a video followed by a multiple choice question. The procedure is the same. I will assume that we have the image uploaded already. So, then we create a new lesson. The assignments uh, given below the lesson do not get graded, right? No. You can't, uh, well, is you there can a default option or is there, there is an option, option to grade it? No, if you choose it as an activity, it is not graded. So, it can be inserted as a question and then it can be graded. You have to have it as an assignment. assignment. I will add the same video ID for the time being and for a multiple choice question, this is the format. Question type is multiple choice, question HTML, you enter the question and in choices, in single quotes, you first give what has to appear on screen, then you give whether this is a correct answer or the wrong answer and then some feedback to the student. So, I will copy paste it. And we will insert this into the lesson body. into the system mm -hmm. and then second time to be able to insert it. So, this is also I think an example of a way to create activity question if you do not want to type any text or anything, create the entire question as an image, simply include that image in the place of the script, right? you only need to have that image, so you create the thing in any word processing software and then you can yeah. save it. You still have to have the choices in the yeah, question. Choices have to be in the question, it is only the choices you have to the images can be easily inserted in the lesson body. For example, say I want to insert an image here, we click on this and you can give the image URL. To get the image URL, all that you have to do is go to assets. And in the images section, once you click on an image, you can copy the URL from here. Next, we will see how to set up a quiz. So, in an assessment, questions are there along with images if required, followed by boxes where the student can enter the answers. And then finally, a submit answers option. So, once they enter all the answers and click on this, it will be graded and they will be able to see their percentage. So, to create this, we again go to the outline. So, this has four steps. In the first step, you have to upload the images. Second step, we have to create the questions. Third, you combine these questions into a question group. And in the fourth step, you actually create the assessment. So, let us assume that the images are already there. 
then we have to create questions. So for that, in assets, click on add short answer. So you can type your question here. Description is like a question title for us to identify which question it is. you can uh, give some score for the question. Grading, if the, uh, it's some number that you're going to check, select numeric, and we give the response here. Finally, save it. So in this, uh, there are more types of answers than in the activity. In activity, it is limited to either text matching, either string matching, or multiple choice. Here, you have those two, as well as numerical answers, and there was one more, right? Range. Multiple lines, or uh, uh, range, yeah, range. range. And in that string matching, now I think this uh, answering a matrix is also included. Of course, this is relevant mostly to technology type of courses, but uh, you can enter a matrix as an answer. To enter a multiple choice question, click on add multiple choice. We can enter the question here. Some description. And whatever you want on screen, the options that the student should be able to see, that has to be entered here. Maybe Chitra, you should emphasize the reason for the description and naming it in that way. Uh, description, once all this is done, as you can see in the outline here, by the end of the course, you will have several questions with you. And it's going to be a whole lot, and you'll find it very difficult to identify which question is which. So if you have some naming convention uh, with respect to the lessons or the topic, it will become easier towards the end to identify them. Right now, I have named them like this so that it comes up at the top. Okay. It's alphabetical order. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, a good way of numbering is to have, uh, a good way of naming is to initially have the numbers uh, for units or lessons, mm -hmm. so that the first unit questions appear at the top. But not only numbers, but then you have some textual part also, which tells you what, what the question, question is. is. And whatever is the correct option, the radio button corresponding to that should be selected. You can select multiple. Once huh. I allow multiple selections, I can do that. So I'll save this. And you can have any number of choices. I mean, you can go on adding them. feedback is for if he chooses that option, you give him a response. We don't give them a direct response right now. Okay. I don't know what that feedback is for. It find out. No, Nobody I seems to similar to, yeah, it's, I guess it is similar to the feedback in activity where uh, if you enter a correct answer, whatever answer you enter, it can come back with a feedback. Mm -hmm. It can say this is the wrong answer or this is the wrong answer because, mm -hmm. I mean, it could say things like that, uh, oh, you have forgotten something or whatever. Sir, I tried that for the class, it didn't show anything. It doesn't work. Doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, I think it's not been uh, yeah, properly Yeah, maybe they have not completed it or something because I also had some difficulty with it, but of course we didn't have any use for it, so we didn't care. It's an intention for the feature, but it's not fully turned on. Once we have created sufficient questions like this, we create a question group. So click on add question group. And then we select the questions that are to be added. We can add more questions or we can delete existing questions. 
and each question can be given some weightage. So, I will give equal weightage for all the questions now. So, once this is done, we save this. So, one thing here is there is some uh, weirdness, uh, some bug I guess that uh, when you create the question, you can also set some weight for the question, number of marks. I would say that you always use one mark for every question and the actual weight you want to have in the assignment, you enter it here. Like let us say you, the first question carries 2, the second one 3 and the other 2 1, you put 2 3 1 1 here. Whereas the main question should be created with just one mark. Because if you do two there and then you do something else here, it, uh, the scoring becomes bizarre I and mean, it does not work correctly. The finals? Yeah. So, this business of creating question group and using it in the assignment, it is sort of optional. You could create the assignment directly from the questions, but we found this to be very convenient to group all the questions for an assignment into a question group and pull only that question group into the assignment. And finally, we create the assignment. So, click on add assignment, give a title, select the parent unit. And in rich text mode, click on this red toolkit. The component type is a question group. And select the question group, click on save. The submission due date should be entered in year, month, date format, followed by the time. Now, the deadline, uh, the time is given in universal coordinated time. So, this is 5 and a half hours earlier than IST. So, suppose I want it to be at 10.30 in the morning, I have to enter 4.30 here. Oh, sorry, 10 in the morning, I have to enter 4. Uh, just there is a check answers button. So, if you enable that, what it will do is, uh, I think it works, right? It, just it gives a check answer option and yeah. they will just show the score, that is it, yeah. final score. Oh, that's it, is it? It doesn't. Uh, it says uh, individually, one does it two, not say no, correct or wrong? It doesn't say individually. What does it do? I mean, this shows the final scores. It shows the on final the same score. page. It shows that uh, one out of two is correct. On the same page. On the same page. After you submit, After you anyway, submit so it, it will show it, and you can submit any number of times. Yeah. I think that uh, yeah, there is also a number of submissions, allow multiple submissions. Normally, we always enable this. That is, they can go on submitting any number of times. The last submission is what is going to be counted before the uh, submission deadline. But if you want to disable it, it's possible. Uh, it really once is too too scary. I think yeah. you should allow multiple submissions. Yeah, yeah and there is no loss really. Yeah. Totally good in that. Uh, one more thing. Once you create the qu quiz, if you retain it as public within a unit that is private, the quiz will still be visible in the progress page. The student will not be able to access the quiz, but it will appear in the progress page. So, they get confused with it. So, it is always better to keep this as private. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, for it to be clearly visible on the left side, it is best to make uh, the assessment in a separate unit below the main unit. If you make it part of that unit, that will not be easily visible and it can create some confusion. That is what we want. Like yeah. this, these two are units and this is an assignment unit. So, this should cover the basics of uploading video lectures and creating assignments. Any doubts here? So Any doubts when people start doing it. <laughs> so, what I would suggest is we will create a email group of course admins and uh, you can add Chitra also on it. Maybe we can also be on it. So, that people have any questions, they can post it there and hopefully somebody will answer. That should be easy enough to do it and create it from our domain. So, once the unit is created, then you can make it public. So, that is fairly easy, direct. You just have to select the unit. And make this public. So, <laughs> it's a live course actually that she's editing. It's dangerous to do this. So <laughs> and once that is done, we usually send out an announcement to the students. So, for that, go to the announcements page.
and you can add a new announcement or you can edit an existing one. So to publish it, the status has to be changed to published. And then if you check this option, an email gets sent to all the people who have enrolled to this course. So this option you would use with some cap if people don't uh, enjoy too many emails coming and then if you make one mistake, you can't keep sending emails again and again. So it's good to have a way in which there is you know, double checking of the email. One person types the announcement, another person checks and then you send it to all. At least double check, make sure you, have, you want to put all the information in there correctly and then send one email. It's very important. And for this course, related to each topic, we made one announcement with the heading, and then we kept on editing it. And each time we edited it, we send a, send out an email to all the students. So, suppose it's about the uh, weekly lectures, we'll have an announcement section like this, and every week we edited it. What she's saying is we did we had only one announcement listed here, so that when you go to announcements, you don't see hundred announcements for every week's lessons. So you will see only one lectures for the week and every week it will keep changing. And similarly one for assignments, one for assignment solutions. Now this is a discussion forum. This is where students post all their questions and we can answer it. And uh, sometimes they discuss the activity assignment questions uh, even before the deadline. So then we have the options of deleting it, but I think all that is clear. It's easy to figure them out. Yeah, it's the standard Google Groups. If you've used any Google Group interface, this is exactly like any other Google Groups, which is just embedded here. But since you're course admin, you'll have slightly more uh, uh, no authority you can you can pin a posting on the top, you can do all those kind of things. But anyway, I, mean, I think all of you yeah. must have used enough discussion groups. That you one, uh, one somewhat useful uh, feature is that many times people keep asking the same kind of question. So then what you can do is instead of answering it, you can set a post to be duplicate of some other post. Okay, So that's useful so that anybody who clicks on uh, like 100 similar questions will go to the same thing and possibly your answer to that. So we click on the set as duplicate option. And then, uh, and then it will show. Then we can search for the post that we are looking for and set this as a duplicate of that. Quite active, particularly just before the end of assignments. The so deadline is very active, and people probably expect some answer. So yeah. manning this is important. So this one, I mean, she was checking it every morning. I used to do it in the evening. She and the other TAs and actually, this is most of the. Lot of the TS, yeah. I would think. Okay, besides uploading the courses, this would be there every day. People keep asking <laughs> one question or another. I know, I guess they're asking questions about the example. Yeah. That covers the basics about handling this. Any doubts? So, um, there is no dissemination of no, material. Like readings as such. It's just the lecture which gets no. examined further. There's no dissemination of the actual attachments. Either. You can. So in the each lesson, you could have links to PDFs and so on. We didn't do that. In our case, we had everything was recorded lectures and the questions. But if you want to, first of all, that uh, uh, below the lecture, below the lecture video, you can have text as well. I mean, you can kind of type your lesson, uh, whatever textual part of your lesson right there. Or you can provide a link to a you video file. You can also file. have a lecture lesson without a video. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can have, well, for instance, they have created things like that. They have created units which are only questions. You can also create units which have only text. And what about recommended readings? Yeah, yeah. yeah, just any, anything you want. So, so in fact, that can page. be separate for every lesson. Yeah. So for every lesson, I mean, let's say chapter this to, the, I mean, chapter X of uh, book Y, you can have it right below that. Can so you go to one of the lessons? Yeah. Just go to one of the lessons and click on edit lesson on top. There. Yeah, first go to the lesson itself, let's see. Yeah, so the lesson shows up like this. So you have a video. Below that, there is something, right? Yeah. You In can our case, we have download. only links to downloadable versions also because sometimes the live internet may not be accessible to everybody. So we put the videos on Google Drive and you can see that links to downloadable videos. So they can download and watch it offline. And then, uh, so that's just a, some, you can have any text in place of that one. You can have links to, let's say, a PDF file or 
anything and you can also have a lot more text you can have uh, suggested reading you can have these questions anything can you go to edit lesson on top but the pdf file there is no provision to upload it here right it has to be uh, else you can put it in the assets and call it from there yeah i think yes, you can put it in assets and uh, or you can just put it in google drive yeah i would suggest drive drive is a better way of yeah. put it in google drive and call it from there put a link okay is there a possibility uh, i think there was one request is there a possibility of a student submitting uh, some handwritten assignment or whatever scanning it and uploading it as a pdf or an image somewhere is that option available mm -hmm. already or do we need to request that so you think all we could uh, kind of do it in some crazy way yeah you have to go uh, outside of the course builder platform i think yeah. we don't have it currently supported so they could put it on their google drive get the link and then put that link as part of the answer and then this essay type question where they put that link and the tas will have to go look at that link and agree thank you so i think some courses are now requesting for that for that uh, yes. uploading images with an image if they want a descriptive answer how do they do it we can upload images in the forum without any issues in the forum it can be done but well, everybody will create it everybody will assign links first yeah so i don't know can you go to the rich text view of this so instead of that two lines of text you can have anything, anything you want like so this is a rich text window where you can put word word like uh, typing so can they give an access like this to the student actually where he can probably put in an image and put in some text and oh, in principle i'm sure it's possible but google yeah. course builder will have to be rebuilt for you we'll have to check it it's also complicated with storage how much you do etc etc yeah. 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 but uh, because they log in with google id maybe mm -hmm. easiest yeah. thing is to for them to right. have it on drive have it on drive and give the link that is the 